In this video, I'm just going to describe how Snapfire works in the game. I've touched on it in a couple of other videos, but I thought it would warrant its own video. So, um, in this example, we've got a Panzer IV that the Axis player has given a Snapfire action to. And we have a Sherman here for the Allied player. In this example, the players have pulled a chit out of the cup, and it's an Allied chit. Pull chip. So the allied player is going to activate this Sherman here and it's going to give this particular tank a move action. As the player moves, and the player is going to try and position the Sherman so that the next turn they'll be able to fire upon that Panzer IV. In this example, as the player moves, and once they've moved a hex, so in this example here, the player moves his, moves his Sherman into this hex here, keeps the orientation the same. It's up to them if they want to change orientation, could move it like that if they so desire. Moves into this new hex here, costs one movement point to move into here. Let's perform that movement point. At that point, in good sportsmanship spirit, It'll give the opposing player a second to declare if they want to perform a snap fire on this moving vehicle here. At this point, now that they've moved and they're in line of sight, which you can draw from that counter to that counter, before, when they were there, there was no line of sight and it hadn't moved anyway. So now it's moved and it's in line of sight of that Panzer IV. That player can now can perform a snap fire attack on that Sherman. Um, because this counter's moved, it is moving, so the player would keep a moving counter with it. Because of the moving, that counter there would be on a minus one to hit. It's a hard target to hit as it's moving across the terrain. Um, once this counter, and let's just suppose in this example, this counter actually uses it, to, that player goes, yes, I'll take that snap fire, take that opportunity and fire upon this Sherman. Once they've done that, and let's say they miss, keep it nice and simple, that snap fire counter is then removed. So it's not the case that you can keep moving and that one can keep snap firing at you. You get, you get one shot with the snap fire and that counter is then removed. Now, if the Axis player, for example, had another counter, let's say it's got a tiger there, and they both got snap fire. And the player moves from there to there. The German, the Axis player here could decide that both of them want snap fire against this one, or they could do one at a time. Snap fire, misses, sake of argument, moves again, snap fire then that's removed. And that's broadly speaking how Snapfire works. It's fully described in the rulebook, but I just thought it'd be worth just mentioning it, talking about it for a few minutes, just to help make that rule very clear. The key thing with Snapfire, again, like movement, is keeping the orientation, the facing of the counter correct in the hex it's within, so facing those apex points of the hex. So that's, for example, there or there. Particularly important in this example because those snap fires are happening. So it's very clear to the opposing player once you've moved and orientated. For example, this fire here is going to be hitting this, the front as it, dice, it, as it intersects the front two hexes. This counter here is going to be hitting from the front as well. If the act, if the if the allied player had presented. Let's say, for example, if they'd chosen to move to the next hex and for some reason <laughs> decided to do that, which I would not recommend, so the orient orientation is correct, facing the apex point there, then when these perform snap fire, they'll be hidden in the re rear of that uh, Sherman, which is definitely not what you want to be doing as the Allied player. So yeah, keep that orientation correct. So hopefully, yeah, give you some um, understanding of how this rule works. It's fully described in the rule book.
Thanks for watching.